I'm Dick Scott with RC Scott Photography. Today we're going to tour Circle B Bar Reserve near Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland is located about halfway between Tampa and Orlando off of Interstate 4. Circle B Bar Reserve is located on the southeast side of the city on Lake Hancock. Lake Hancock is a fairly large lake, the largest in the area, and it's basically uninhabited, which makes for a great wildlife area. This used to be Circle B Bar Ranch, but in the year 2000, Polk County Board of County Commissioners and the Southwest Florida Water Management District purchased the land and turned it into a wildlife reserve and basically a nature center. It is a great place to come and do birding and bird photography. It's fantastic. I've been coming here for several years and it's one of my favorite places to come in all of Florida. There's usually always something to take a picture of. There are numerous species of native birds here, along with in the fall and spring migration season, there are all kinds of migrants here as well. So there are lots and lots of birds here. We're going to give you a kind of a basic tour today. If uh, you're going to come out here, be sure and bring plenty of water, especially if it's in the summertime or it's hot. Uh, you can walk for miles out here. It's a fairly large reserve. It's 1,267 acres. So that's fairly large and you can walk for literally miles. The last time I was here, I walked about over five miles uh, carrying the camera and everything. So it's a, it's a great place to come take pictures and to do birding and to just watch nature. Uh, you can also bicycle out here. You can also run out here, which is a lot of people do. Uh, you can do all kinds of activities. There's nice picnic shelters at the Discovery Center. And we'll get into all that later. But it's time to go see this place and see what you can do here. So come along and let's get started. We'll begin our tour at the Discovery Center. The center is open daily, but hours vary, so check the website below for more information. The Discovery Center has clean restrooms, exhibits, and a classroom used for training and other events. It has a library filled with all kinds of books on nature. They have an information desk staffed by people that will happily answer any questions you might have and provide you with a map of the reserve. Just outside the Discovery Center, you'll find a number of very nice covered picnic shelters under the oak trees for you and your family to enjoy. Bring a picnic, lunch, and stay for the day. There is no food provided, so you'll have to bring your own. If you are there after the center closes or before it opens, there are porta johns available in the parking lot areas. We are going to start our journey on Shady Oak Trail. This trail is to the east of the Discovery Center. When you come out of the center, you stay to the left and follow your map and trail signs. Shady Oak is named for all of the very large oak trees you'll be walking under on your way to Lake Hancock. These oaks are covered with resurrection fern, which when it is very dry, looks like it's dead, but gets some rain however, and they spring to life and are quite beautiful. Once you come out from under the trees, you are only a short distance from Lake Hancock. The distance of each trail is listed on the map. Shady Oak joins up with Alligator Alley and now our journey really begins. Once you reach Alligator Alley, you'll find the birds and wildlife start to pick up. You'll probably soon see where the trail got its name. This part of the story will come at the end of this video where I discuss alligators and show you what you might expect to see here at Circle B Bar Reserve and tell you the do's and don'ts when it comes to alligators. There are thousands of birds that call this area home and what you will see varies from day to day and during different times of the year. When the spring and fall migration season is at its peak, there are a lot of non-native birds present, alongside the numerous species of local birds that call this place home. The first roughly half of Alligator Alley runs right beside the shoreline of Lake Hancock. This is a very large Florida lake, the largest in the area, but yet it is basically uninhabited, which is great for wildlife. About halfway to the turn, you'll find a very nice dock with a covered shelter at the end. The shelter has benches so you can stop and enjoy the lake and rest a while. 
After the dock, the trail continues to the south along the lake until the edge of the reserve is reached. The trail then makes a 90 degree turn to the right and heads west toward Heron Hideout and Marsh Rabbit Run Trails. There are open areas in the wetlands covered with grass and vegetation which attract the birds and wildlife. These are wetlands so depending on the rainy season there are varying amounts of water. The water levels are controlled but when there is no rain during the dry season for Florida there is no water to control so some of the wetlands dry up. For this reason the birds depending on the wetlands for food move around the wetlands in search of their next meal. This includes all the water birds like herons, ducks, coots, moorhens, gallinules, egrets, night herons, and bitterns, to name a few. So depending on the time of year, you will find these birds in different places around the reserve. However, you will generally find birds in all of these areas all year long because none of the areas generally completely dry up, although it can happen. Once we reach the intersection of Alligator Alley, Heron Hideout, and Marsh Rabbit Run, we will go left toward the south again and Eagle Roost Trail. Most of the trails at Circle B are what they call berm trails. This means it is a road wide enough for a vehicle, but generally about 25 feet wide or less in some cases, with water on both sides. Except for a tour tram provided by the reserve that runs during certain hours and days, there are no motorized vehicles allowed on the trails except for maintenance vehicles and bicycles. You have to walk to be able to see this reserve, although wheelchairs and motorized handicapped scooters are of course allowed. The berm roads are generally accessible, but there are a lot of tree roots on some of the trails, so it can be a rough ride. Even walking, you have to watch your step to keep from tripping, which I do quite often, while I'm watching a bird and walking at the same time. It is generally a good practice to watch where you are walking and then stop and view the birds. As we head down Eagle Roost toward the turn, there is water on both sides of the berm and gallinules, including the beautiful purple gallinule, along with herons, egrets, coots, moorhens, and a wide variety of other birds frequent this area. If you continue south on Eagle Roost, it turns to the west and heads toward Wading Bird Way. This trail is named for the eagle's nest that has been there for years down near the end of the trail on the right side bordering the wetlands in the top of a pine tree. There are a number of eagles that call Circle B home, and I have seen up to four at one time. There are sometimes meadow larks and during migration season other species of birds along the trail. I personally have not been able to photograph that many birds along the trail, but the eagles are worth the trip if they are nesting. When I reach the turn, I turn around and head back down Eagle Roost toward Marsh Rabbit Run. Once I get to the trail, I head west toward Wading Bird Way. Marsh Rabbit Run is a little narrower than Heron Hideout and the vegetation grows right up to the bank so you need to look carefully in the bushes and trees for the smaller species of birds that are everywhere during migration season. If you want to take their picture, you will in some cases need a flash because they will oftentimes be in the shade. Small birds seem to always be moving and the flash will light them up, put a sparkle in their eye and freeze the action. A flash bracket like the RCSB7 is recommended to get the flash above the camera to prevent red eye and what I call steel eye effect when shooting birds. There are some dead trees along this trail that make for some very nice photos. Some years there are yellow flowers that bloom by the thousands along this trail on the north side, and when they are in full bloom, they are spectacular. This year the flowers were not that good, however there has been some management of the land going on this year during the dry season, which is when they tend to work on the reserve to control the vegetation. Hopefully, this will bring the flowers back later in the year and early next year, at least I hope so. A lot of this trail to the north is covered in grass and it is quite beautiful when it is blowing in the breeze. About halfway down the trail there is a dock on the south side with a viewing area at the end and a blind with portholes for viewing and photographers. This dock is not covered like the Lake Hancock dock, so there is no shade. Just past the dock, I turned around and came back to Heron Hideout and went north toward the Discovery Center and parking lot. From Marsh Rabbit Run to the parking lot along Heron Hideout is always a good spot to see all the various species of water birds that inhabit the reserve. This video shows a beautiful great blue heron trying to catch dinner. I use the word beautiful a lot, but that's because it is a beautiful place with beautiful birds, and there I used it twice more. I reversed the order on the video in which I toured the reserve today because of the light. I actually toured the next two trails this morning and started at the Discovery Center after lunch. For the video, I reversed the order to make it more like the order most people will take. I took an hour break and had a nice lunch and rested for a bit. 
Now it's time to get on with it. They call this trail we're about to go on Windmill Whisper, but I'm not quite sure why. I parked at the first parking lot right after you enter the reserve to get to Windmill Whisper and Wading Bird Way trails. It puts your car closer and reduces the amount of walking you have to do. Windmill Whisper starts out under some oak trees for a short distance and then comes out from under the trees. Just before you get to the end of the shade on the right side headed west, close to the little drainage area that goes under the trail, you will often find thistles growing. While you may not want them in your yard, they have a fantastic and yes, beautiful bloom. Bees and many other insects love them. You will also see a lot of butterflies along this trail. The intersection of Windmill Whisper and Wading Bird Way is where the windmill is located. It was once used for watering cattle when this land was a working ranch. We now begin our journey down Wading Bird Way. After a short distance, you will again be on a berm road with water on both sides. This area has a little bit of everything and it has become one of my favorite places to find birds. The beautiful Rosiette Spoonville hangs out along this trail and at the west end of Marsh Rabbit Run, although they can be seen in any area of the reserve. They are a funny bird with a big spoon-shaped bill. They feed by swinging their head side to side in the water to catch and filter out their food. During their breeding season, they have a bright pink to red patch on their wings that is stunning. They are fun to watch. I was fortunate enough to find one of the resident bobcats on this trail. Actually, he found me. He came right by me on the berm road within about 10 feet. He was eyeing me as I was eyeing him. I snapped these photos as he walked by. Yes, he was beautiful. He really was. He was also wet, I guess, from hunting for food in the wetlands. There's a whole family of bobcats that live in this area. Bobcats are not dangerous if you leave them alone. They are as afraid of you as you should be of them. It was a pleasure to finally see one. I get sighting reports all the time, but it took me almost two years to finally see and photograph this one. It was a real treat. I have also seen some of the wild hogs that live on the reserve along this trail. As you can see from this video, you can also sometimes see them in the Discovery Center parking lot or pretty much anywhere on the reserve, but they prefer wetter areas where the soil is soft and moist so they can easily root around for their food. You will see areas of the reserve where they have been rooting around and tearing up the ground. Be careful in these areas because they basically leave holes everywhere and you could step in one and twist your ankle. This mama pig has 10 babies with her. The babies are very cute, but keep your distance because they are wild and mama pig might come after you if you mess with one of her babies. There are numerous types of flowers that can be seen in the reserve. There is something blooming almost all year long. Butterflies are along many of the trails during certain times of the year and provide yet another thing to take pictures of. Once you get to the intersection of Wading Bird Way and Marsh Rabbit Run, you will find this shelter, a welcome break from the sun and a great place to rest for a bit. The only bad thing about Wading Bird Way is there is no shade on the entire trail. It gets really hot in the summertime, so walk this trail early or late in the day during the summer months, which in Florida can be April to October. It is early April when I am making this video and we have already had temperatures in the 90s. There are other trails I did not cover, but if you are birding or photographing birds, I covered the best trails to find the majority of the birds you might be looking for. Not to say the other trails I did not cover don't have any birds, they certainly do. But if you have limited time to spend at Circle B, then I would suggest these trails first. Now, let's get to the alligators. Often people just want to see an alligator, especially visitors from other parts of the country, or the world for that matter, where there are no alligators. Alligators are an impressive prehistoric looking creature. Today they are one of the few creatures left on earth to remind us of those days. The first thing you need to know about gators is they are dangerous. An alligator can kill you as we have seen in recent events in Florida. Never try to get a selfie with an alligator. A selfie with an alligator up close and personal could cost you your life and no picture is worth that. Keep your distance from all alligators, especially the big ones. Stay at least 50 feet away. Alligators are surprisingly fast for short distances, so don't think you can outrun them. They could be on top of you before you know it. Alligators are generally docile creatures except during breeding season. Every year, Circle B will close trails during alligator breeding season because they are more dangerous during that time. 
it is common to see alligators crossing the trail to get from one area to another. There are lots of big gators here as you can see from these pictures, as well as lots of smaller ones. Do not ever harass or feed an alligator. If you in any way make that gator come after you, the gator will be captured and destroyed and you could be injured or killed. So leave them alone. Admire them, take their picture from a distance, and move on. You are not doing these gators any favor by drawing attention to them. For those of you that didn't grow up in Florida and see alligators all their life, there are alligators in almost every lake, stream, river, pond, and on most golf courses anywhere in Florida you might go. They are not just in wildlife reserves, so be careful around the shoreline of any body of water in Florida and look out for them. Most of the time they are as scared of you as you should be of them and they will keep their distance and go the other way. However, this is why Circle B Bar Reserve does not allow pets on the property. Alligators like to eat small animals and will attack a dog in a heartbeat. They are oftentimes close to the bank and if your dog runs down to the water, which dogs love to do, he could be lunch for a gator. Don't be terrified of gators, just use common sense when you are around them. Treat them with respect and you will never have a problem. I have been photographing in wetland areas for many years and never had any issues with a gator. Just as a note, you also need to be aware of snakes. There are a lot of snakes in any wilderness area and Circle B is no exception. Today I had a water moccasin cross the trail not more than 5 feet in front of me as I was recording a video. So look where you step and you'll be fine. This is another reason you need to stay on the trails and out of the weeds. Circle B is a fantastic place to bird and do bird photography. You just need to remember that it is a wilderness area even though it is close to the city and just use common sense. At the end of this video, I will show some of my photos that were taken at Circle B Bar Reserve. This time at a slower pace than the opening so you can really focus on the pictures. I have been coming to Circle B for several years and it is still one of my favorite places to go for bird and nature photography. Come see for yourself if you are ever in Central Florida. You won't be disappointed. I hope you enjoyed the tour of Circle B Bar Reserve today. I know I did. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button, which will help me with YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me through YouTube, or you can send an email to dscott at rcscottphotography.com. My website is www.rcscottphotography.com. Many of my pictures are posted on my website. I hope to see you again soon, and thank you for watching.